Hi, this is uh, VK4GXE with another uh, radio update. Um, the receiver today is a General Dynamics R1051B. Uh, this was the uh, mainstay of uh, the American USN United States Navy uh, for some years, um, still in service until the 90s. Um, it was to replace the R390 and a few of the other receivers that were used as shipboard in, in the 60s. Um, Fully solid state except for two valves in the front end, which uh, provided the uh, radio with some immunity to high level signals and uh, also uh, reduced the low oscillator radiation. Um, interesting that uh, they went for a casco pair, but uh, that's indeed what uh, was inside these receivers. Um, the receiver, other than that, is fully solid state. It is also a synthesized set and was designed for perspective, uh, I would guess, from uh, a low skill. Uh, setting. Uh, the R390 required you to peak antennas, uh, adjust various settings, play around with the um, various settings on the receiver. So the 390 was replaced by this particular receiver. Um, very simplistic to use. Uh, you just dial in the frequencies, select the mode operating, uh, and ensure that you've got obviously the correct uh, sideband selected on the, uh, the audio side. Um, the meters themselves are independently measuring the sidebands. In fact, the unit does have an ISB independent sideband position. Both upper and lower can be received at the same time and are independently fed to the rear of the receiver. Um, you could have data on one side and, and voice on the other, being the, uh, the concept at the time. Um, the uh, receiver here was received um, in non-operating condition. The, uh, there was some trouble in the the main turret assembly which sits, and I'll show you later internally, um, there was some trouble in the synthesizer, um, what they call the six pack, and also there was some trouble in the <laughs> a reference oscillator. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll come to that a bit later. But essentially all those problems have been cured and the unit is now receiving exactly as it should be. Um, the front end valves, ironically one of them did need a replacing. Um, the, I think it was a 6AN6 six um, something, I um, can't remember the exact number. But it needed replacing, and uh, the old one was very low emission and uh, low GM. But uh, that brought the receiver back to uh, back to operation, uh, and once all the other problems were fixed, uh, it just needed a little bit of a tickle on the uh, the AGC line to make sure that uh, the AGC setup on the two modules inside to make sure that the receiver was set, yeah, as it should be. Okay, so without uh, much further ado, um, it really is a single sideband, provides AM. CW was probably a requirement, but at, uh, when you bear in mind the CW on this set runs with a very low BFO injection, not particularly stable, and then an 8 kilohertz bandwidth, you can uh, see it really wasn't of much use to be quite frank in any, uh, in any real sense of the world of what CW is intended for. So uh, without further ado, I'll just uh, say go uh, and have a tune around. I'll put it into the AM mode first. Uh, I've got the headphones hooked up to a little off-board amplifier here, and uh, we'll just turn it up a little bit here so you can actually hear the noise. Um, Again, it's afternoon here in Brisbane, so I'll just uh, go up to a uh, Radio National, and um, you can hear the audio. Recovery's pretty good. Um, I'm sure we're picking this up from, from here. It's, it's uh, Sunday afternoon, so it's a bit of foot footy on the, on the radio, um, but the receiver has, gives a good account of itself on, on, on AM, um, and again, on single sideband, and, um, you'll hear it. Upper sideband. If you wanted to receive the lower sideband, we'd have to unplug and go because of the independent nature of the unit. And um, let's turn that a little bit. So again, you'd hear it. And of course, you've got the indication here of the audio level. Let's go back to the upper sideband. I'll do a few more. So the meter indicates. Um, Indicates audio level only. There's no RF uh, power signal, S meter, whatever you call. I want to call it on here. Um, not quite sure why they left that off at this stage of the game. Um, I guess if they could confirm a certain signal to noise on the audio, they presumably leave the circuit to be good. Uh, I'm talking about the actual HF circuit, that is. Um, but the uh, the lack of an S meter does. Yeah, it'd be better if it was on on there. I think. Um, so this is a fairly strong station, we get this uh, convenient, very strong most days. I'll just see if um, 
Oh, my other test station, the uh, New Zealand is up. Yes, so is New Zealand. Let's go back to Bay Area, make it a bit easier. Because maybe this kind of study can lead us so you can see that signal sense is often quite good coming in. This is a couple of thousand K. So we're in Brisbane. This would be coming out of, uh, out of New Zealand. Something else we can just check out would be the WWV or up here. And there's WWV. I'm going to see what's You hear it uh, chiming away. That'll be coming in from Hawaii this afternoon. Okay. Now the the main dominant frequency selection on this uh, receiver is, is a decade arrangement and uh, the intent is to set up your megahertz obviously then kilohertz. Um, the megahertz drives a, um, a large turntable inside it so motor driven and uh, I'll just uh, you probably hear it driving in the background there. We'll go back. So it drives a large turret assembly um, in one megahertz steps and it selects a pre-selector and a few other, a few other mixes and uh, and goodies um, to ensure that it's optimized for that band. I guess this is to get over the need for pre-selecting and peaking and tweaking uh, as we would have done on uh, early receivers. The hundreds of kilohertz is just literally you can hear that there are things happening in there moving but they're not motor driven, they're, uh, they're chain driven and you can go up through the bands and we can go back up to um, again bang on to Radio New Zealand again. So it's coming quite uh, quite smooth this afternoon. There is a um, an adjuster here, and we might hear that a bit more if we run single sideband. So I'll turn it up. Now we're actually seven two zero and then zero zero zero. There are a number of you can hear it going off there. There are a number of a hundred hundred hertz steps right and right way through one to nine, and also there's a uh, this will flash. There's a continuously variable. Again, you can hear it off tune. I've seen normally leave it parked in the uh, the zero to that position. There is a separate line and phone output. Obviously, the intent is to set the uh, the phone up for you know zero dB on peaks or whatever the, the network was uh, audio network was going to cope with. Um, lock it down. That is then fixed, and then you can just on the audio side here locally, you can actually adjust the uh, audio phone side. Uh, interesting novel feature is the two fuses. Um, they are actually fused with neons. Um, I don't mean the neons are fused, but there's a fuse and a neon in there. If the fuse blows, the neon illuminates. And, uh, and if it comes through, there's a bit of, a, a bit of damage to this one, which I'll uh, replace this week. So we'll also have a bit of uh, a look on uh, upper sideband um, in the amateur world. We'll leave it there. Everything else is the same. I'll just drop it down into 20 meters. I'll just turn that a little bit here. Now this is where having a VFO would really be of use. Um, I'll just step it through a few. See if we find anybody on. Any frequencies? No. Somebody in the noise there, so we can find the stronger station. It's going to be 5 kilohertz. Uh, kilowatt, uh, it is early afternoon here, it's not really... Uh, so it's in Melbourne. The other guy is uh, US. Let's see if we can find something a little bit better. Yeah. So the method I've adopted for tuning around is getting on, on the fives or the tens and uh, just uh, going through on a decade count so you can hear anybody. Um, either that or use a search receiver, find the signal, then go back to this guy. Let me just see if there's anything on uh, on 15, just in case you've missed something up here. I've been up 10 years and years ago. Probably the hottest place I've ever been. I went there one time at Christmas and uh, 
Paul before, BK5, PAS. Um, yeah, the, uh, so the audio is quite crisp. It's a very good recovered audio out of this uh, set. Probably slightly wider. It's probably more the 3.2 or 3.5 um, kilohertz. But it, um, it is a joy to listen to. If you're ever uh, keen to just have a single frequency monitoring system, this would certainly be the one to go for. Um, I'll just also try the, uh, the aviation band again. So again, my, my popular is 8867. I'll just have a listen. It may or may not be busy, um, but it does work. It comes and shines through in this fixed frequency uh, dialer application. And uh, I don't think it's going to play for us. Let's just go down to see if there's any. something down in there but not now let's just go back to uh, 8 sorry, to um, 15 sometimes it doesn't Contact's probably a little bit cleaner. Oh, right there. Yeah. It's like the ass in there. No, so you can see it's pretty pretty quiet this afternoon. Now the receiver itself covers only um, two megahertz three to thirty, so there's no um, tuning around on the medium wave bands. Um, there was a VLF converter I've seen around. I think if it was an aftermarket design, um, some Italian station with it, but I'm not sure whether they were uh, actually sold into the US at all. Let's just have a quick listen here since somebody else. All very quiet now. So there we have it, the uh, R1051B John Dynamics receiver. Okay, here's a bit more of a look at the uh, 1051. Um, <clears throat> the whole unit is now withdrawn um, by removing the six screws at the front, and uh, the whole in pulls forward out of the the main chassis. And uh, over on the left here, you can see the, the main turret assembly, um, RF, RF amplifier. It's a cascode arrangement. There are basically, uh, well, it says 2 to 29 locations inside that this rotates. It's a motorized system. You can see the number down here. It's on, uh, on 10 megs at the moment. I can, uh, I can drop that, sorry, can go up to 11 or even back down to 10. There we go. So that shows you how it locks back in again. And uh, the whole the whole unit here has a number of chains underneath, uh, which uh, pull and push various cams and gears around to uh, give all the right settings. Uh, quite a mechanical, um, intensive unit. Um, at the back is mainly the power supply system. There's a uh, the main BFO oscillator injection there, uh, and uh, mode selector. Um, to the right here are the two IF amplifiers, or the AGC work is done in here. And uh, these are the, uh, the two units which mine were quite far out. To the right of this is your 5 megahertz reference. And I do suspect, again, there's probably a high failure point in these receivers. Um, I'll probably have to rework this yet again sometime. It's, I just noticed today that it was uh, not warming up quite the way I liked, but it is currently functioning okay. And uh, this unit at the front here was affectionately known as the 6-pack. Um, the whole unit comes out. The whole group of modules all come together out on a mounting plate. And fundamentally it's the, the synthesizer. And um, you can probably make out some of the, there's the 100 kilohertz, the 1 and 10, uh, the 100 cycles. Um, there's a spectrum generator here for it to lock to. And uh, an RF translator, basically mixing and uh, combining 